In addition to the regular mail, I went to the dollar store again, where nothing's really a dollar. So for three fifty, I found this tweezer set, and the timing was interesting because this includes a set of reverse tweezers where you push them in to open them and then you can let them go and it's like a clamp to hold things. And I just ordered a set of those on AliExpress and they're going to take forever to get here. Then I saw this. So I thought for one, two, three, four, seven pieces, I'll give it a try. And of course, a lot of these were misaligned. So I looked through all the packages and found what I thought was a tolerable set. So let's see how it is. So up first, I don't know if this has other purposes, but to me it looks like a dip IC extractor. For example, if you have a chip in a socket, this gets underneath and you can extract the chip. Maybe a little more elegant than what I just did. I've already got at least one more of these from a couple of decades ago, but it doesn't hurt to have more. For the rest of these, I was trying to find the best combination where they all seem to meet at the ends. So I think I did relatively okay. But these are the ones I really wanted the most. Yeah, they can just clamp onto something and then help you hold it, maybe while soldering, or even as a little bit of a heat sink. Let's say this LED is really fragile, so I need to hold on to it while doing something else. Then I have two more free hands, I can do what I needed to do. And also this may help draw heat away from the component. So I think that's not bad for 350, especially because I was able to go through and look for a good set where all the ends meet. This is switches times one. I hope there's more than one. Yeah, there's a whole bunch. These are little surface mount slide switches, so it looks like one pull, double throw. And the reason I wanted these specifically, I used this on this PCB, the uh, Christmas tree ornament thing I did a couple of months ago. This works perfectly fine. So I thought, I'm going to stock up on these, and there we go. The one that's on that other PCB, I only had that one, and I actually took it off of a different PCB. Then I realized, hey, I can get these easily on AliExpress, and there's already a footprint in KiCad. So it seemed like the right part to get for a tiny switch. 50 pieces of this little slide switch. It says here the part number was MSK-12CO2. You can get 50 of these for just over a dollar, but yeah, you're going to want to find better shipping. And these are really tiny surface mount parts. So these four pins on the sides would be mostly mechanical mounting. I'm not sure if they're intended to be connected to ground in some cases, but there's three terminals. And of course, having the part number, we can look it up ourselves. But this listing actually shows the mechanical configuration and a PCB recommended footprint. But let's look for some more details. 300 milliamps, 6 volt rating. So it's really meant for low level logic sort of applications. You're not going to be switching a lot of power with this. And if you're using this for low level signals and inserting a certain resistance in line is going to be a problem. We know now 70 milliohms of contact resistance would be what this switch contributes. And you can switch this thing 10,000 times, which is about standard for a cheap little switch. Better ones will give you 100,000 cycles or even a million if you've got something really robust. So for my purpose, when I just need a tiny compact switch for low current circuits on a little PCB, this is perfectly fine. This says four times integrated circuit. Um, no, 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 and no. Okay, this looks like 0805 10 nano, 100 pieces. 10 micro, 100 pieces, 0805. Sounds like a restocking thing. 0805 1 nano, 100 pieces. 0805 1 micro, 100 pieces. Okay, let me try this. Play the shell game here. All right. So restocking 0805 capacitors for PCB projects, we got standard stuff. 1 nano, which I actually probably don't use very much. 10 nano is a typical one. Now 100 nano, 0.1 micro, I don't have in this stock. 
but I think I ordered a bunch before or else I ordered them separately and they're on their way. Those are the most common for power supply decoupling and stuff. Otherwise, for switching power supplies and other bulk capacitance, 1 micro and 10 micro, all 0805. That's the kind of parts I use. So now I'm feeling a lot better because I had maybe 10 of each of these and I used them up long ago. I got all of those capacitors from this same seller on AliExpress. And when I bought these, the 1 micro and 10 micro for the 100, it was 188. Now it says 207. And the smaller value parts were 96 cents for the 100 pieces at the time. So mostly what I was searching for, I wanted 100 pieces. I wanted 0805 and then whatever value. But I also wanted to make sure the temperature coefficient was something like either X7R or X5R. In other words, basically not Y5V. I also wanted to make sure it was at least a 50 volt rated part, if not 100, because that way I could just throw them in a pile, not worry about the specs later when I don't know anymore where I got them. But this temperature coefficient, DigiKey's got some info. If I'm looking at X7R or X5R, I can go up to plus 85 or plus 125 degrees Celsius. And the R is plus or minus 15% tolerance. Y5V, minus 30 Celsius to plus 85 Celsius. But the tolerance on the capacitance value over temperature I could go up by 22% or down by 82%. So I was shopping around for this type of spec part. So I ordered these couple of parts to get me restocked. Maybe I'll take a look at what else they sell, compare the prices, because once I know I've ordered something from a certain seller and I've received it no problem, I kind of feel more secure reordering things from the same places. So this one turned out okay. This says development three. So is that quantity three development? Oh, it actually looks like three little modules. They look like Arduino Pro Micro. Okay. There we are, three Arduino Pro Micros because I've been using these up on various PCB projects like the Atmel High Voltage Fuse Programmer, and these are good for making USB human input devices because they have the 32U4 chip on it. So I wanted a good supply of these on hand. Arduino Pro Micro with the AT Mega 32U4 5 volt version. Right now, these are over $4 on eBay. When I got it, it was $2.88 and I got three of them at that cost. So that's probably why I snagged three of them. But aside from the fact that these are what I've been using on a bunch of projects to control other things on a PCB, and they are relatively physically small, self-contained USB, we can use this as a USB HID device. I've already done several USB HID projects, mostly using Digispark as a keyboard mouse kind of thing. So it's good to have more options. Description of contents on this left blank. So it feels like one of those plastic storage boxes full of something. And it is barely fitting in here, so it's hard to remove. Chip sockets. I knew I ordered a kit of those. It doesn't look like many of each, but I've been ordering large quantities of the ones I specifically want. And then for anything more obscure, like however many pins this happens to be, a couple of them being bent. That's what I wanted a kit like this for, including these little six pin that are convenient for opto couplers if I want to socket those. And of course, we can also mix and match and create our own socket because they are stackable. So let's say I needed a 16 pin. Well, I got two eights and those fit perfectly side by side to create a bigger custom socket. So that's why I really wanted this, just some versatility and some obscure sizes. A kit of 66 dip sockets. Let's just pick one. So there you go, a nice little plastic case, all kinds of different socket pin sizes. As usual, look for the right combination of price and shipping. So we get 18 of these six pin sockets, probably way more than I'd ever need ever in a lifetime. And not so many of all the other standard ones, but 
just more so as a sample kit or in a pinch or like I said if you want to stack some of these together and make a custom size that you don't have in stock it's a convenient kit to have. And this is solder wire so it says and it feels like it's heavy enough. Yes I ordered a couple of these I'm waiting for another one still of a different brand. So what do we have? Flux 2%, 6337, so it's not lead free. Model A, don't know what that means, or CF10. Diameter 1.2 millimeter. It's relatively thick. Part of what I want, I want to do different tests with various solder like this and see how it really holds up for everyday use. Because I tend to use this Kester stuff, but I am going to run out imminently. And if I can get cheaper stuff and it still works as well for me, why spend a million dollars on this right now? I also want to get a collection of different diameters. For example, with Kester, I have this thinner stuff to go right down onto small chip pins and this bigger diameter stuff for everyday use. So that's 0.02 inches and this one I can't read. It's been torn off and my caliper is not down here, so whatever. It's thicker and thinner, and this new stuff is even thicker again. So let's try a little soldering and see what happens. I found this very small circuit board scrap, and I got a four pin header. So I'm going to do two pins with the old Kester stuff and the other two pins with the new Chinese stuff. All right. Tip has been tinned. Okay, so that seemed normal enough. And this new stuff, it was taped down, so I'm gonna remove some off of the end here so there's no extra residue impacting the results. First I'll just see how it melts. I noticed there's a lot more smoke, it seems, coming off of this, at least in person. Okay. Now, one thing, this being so heavy gauge, I found I was struggling to get it on a certain part of the iron tip where it would actually melt, but that's probably just because it's so bulky. Once I got it going, it seemed like it was going fine. So aside from my not-so-great soldering skills, the two connections on the left are the Kester, and I don't know how clear it will be coming out, but the two on the right the solder looks really not as shiny, and they're both the same 6337 composition. So it kind of looks like it's lead free on the right. So I'm not sure right now from that little test how I feel about this. I am waiting for another brand, which is probably all the same stuff with a different sticker on it anyway. We'll see. But for now, I feel a lot more confident, comfortable using proper name brand stuff that looks the way a solder connection is supposed to look when it's not lead free. Maybe the next time I do a test I'll just try adding extra flux myself, see if that can improve it. But for now I'm putting this on hold. I got this solder on AliExpress. 2% flux, tin, lead. Looking at the different options for the weight, 50 grams would be 79 cents right now and 100 grams would be $1.28. Skimming the details for anything pertinent. We can get it 1 or 1.2 millimeter diameter. It says 2% flux. When I go to the Kester website and look up this part number of the exact solder I was using, I can see here 3.3%. I'm pretty sure that's the flux. So right here, yeah, 3.3% flux is what I was using. So could that be the difference of 2% versus 3.3% flux. Maybe I'll just try doing another connection with a whole lot of gel flux added. See how this goes. So there's this week's collection of things, including another successful dollar store shopping spree, some more restocking of parts, resistors, capacitors, kind of things that I'm running out of, sockets to build up a collection, more pro micros, because I keep using those, and little switches for surface mount board projects. As usual, thanks for stopping in. Special thanks to Patreon supporters for helping finance all of this stuff. See you on the next video.